Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a first look at a Linux distribution called Netrunner. Now, I will be the first to admit to you that I've never heard of this distribution before. So what we're going to do first is actually go find out what the hell this is. So, so if we go to the beloved distrowatch.com and note the sarcasm there, because I know a lot of people hate distrowatch, but it's a good resource. We'll see that Netrunner is a Linux distribution based on Debian Stable out of Germany. Its main desktop is KD Plasma. It's actually kind of rare these days to have a distribution that only has one, you know, desktop environment. Usually there's a few of them. It's Distro, Distro Watch has them la labeled for beginners. So it says Netrunner, Netrunner is a Debian based distribution featuring a highly customized KDE desktop with extra applications, multimedia codecs, Flash, and Java plugins, probably not Flash anymore, I'm just saying, and a unique look and feel. The modifications are designed to enhance the user-friendliness of the des desktop environment, while still pre preserving the freedom to tweak. A separate rolling edition based on Manjaro Linux was launched in 2014, was discontinued, relaunched in 2017, and discontinued in 2019. Those people need to make up their minds. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's an interesting roller coaster. Launch in 2014, discontinued, relaunch in 2017, and then discontinued in 2019. It's a shame because I would have loved to have seen a, a rolling release on based on Manjaro. I believe I have one a, a first look at a distro based on Manjaro later on. I can't remember. It's on the list, I think. But anyways, let's go ahead and look at their website just for a minute. So. Very well designed website just off the bat. You can always tell when the design the developers know what they're doing because they can at least put together a website. I'm looking at you, Linux Mint. Your website is terrible. Oh. <laughs> so apparently they have some stuff here for the Pine Book, which would mean that they can run an ARM, which is interesting. All right, no, enough of this. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Let's jump over to virtual box here. Now I have a virtual machine all ready to, and raring to go so we can just go ahead and hit start and go ahead and uh, see if we can make this full screen. Alright, we'll see how long this takes to start up. Startup time is not impressive but we'll have to keep in mind that this is a virtual machine so it might be a little quicker on hardware. Interesting choice of red icon. Also, really weird that it took so long to load the desktop. Well, the icon seemed, or the cursor seemed to have uh, loaded right quick. Okay, so this is just KDE. They're using the application dashboard by default, which is cool. We'll take a look at all that stuff here momentarily. Let's just go ahead and get us an install going. So as is basically usual these days, unless you're running something like Fedora or OpenSUSE or I guess Ubuntu, you're going to see the Calamari's installer. I think that's pretty much become the default for most Linux distributions. So American English, next. And New York is fine. And let's see here, default keyboard is fine. I'm going to erase the disk. No option here for sw swap. It just automatically says you're going to get a swap whether you like it or not. Interesting. That is the first I've seen that in a long time. It, almost universally now, especially with the Calamari's installer, it gives you an option. There's no option here. It gives you a swap. Interesting. Okay. Let's create ourselves a username and password here. Right. And also, uh, very oddly, almost always there is an option here to enter a separate root password. There's not that option in this, so they've taken that away. That's an interesting decision. So let's go ahead and install and see how long this takes. 6.54. Okay, I'm back. It took about four minutes, so that's not too bad, especially on a virtual machine where you're constrained by 
processors and stuff like that. So as is usual, you want to make sure you hit the restart checkbox here and then hit done. Now, normally this is where you'll want to remove the install medium. I'm actually going to end up having to go through and sh shut down the machine here. Um, so that I can do it manually. So close. Settings storage and remove. Okay. All right. Now we'll hit start again. And we can make this full screen again. Okay. All right, let's look at load times here. Not bad at all. Um, this looks pro this is probably SDDM, I would guess. Uh, fairly well designed, so let's type in our password here. I'll... You can always tell, like I said before, you can always tell the good how good a di distribution is, especially a KD di distribution, on how long it takes between the login screen and the actual desktop loading. This was very quick. So that's very impressive. This is the second Debian distribution or base distribution that I've tried with KDE. The last one was MX Linux that had very impressive launch times. So let's take a look at what we get. So first of all, not a welcome app here in, in anywhere to be found. Now they do have a, a readme up here. That just takes you to a web page. And that gives you some tips and some stuff here, I guess. But even that's that's pretty limited. That's like maybe 500 words, maybe a thousand words of support for whatever. Hmm. So definitely not something that you'd want to hand off to a brand new Linux user because there's no web welcome app here. So again, we have the application dashboard, so we can just go through these. This will actually make it easier for you to see, because it's actually a bit bigger. Be a bit, bit, it'll actually be a bit bigger. I can't talk. So we have a uh, app image launcher, which is uh, interesting. So they're going to focus on app images instead of snap, probably. We have Arc, which is a archive, an archiver. Audacious, Burger Space. I'm guessing that's a. Is that a game? Yeah, it's a game. Okay. I've never heard of it before. All right. Um, of course, it's a game. It was in the games application, games category. Um, let's see here. Ch cheese, which is going to be the like the selfie camera thing that is like a ripoff of what Mac OS used to have. Uh, chess. Discover, which is the um, software center. Dolphin. Uh, a Firefox and this is the extended support release for a Firefox which means that it's not the latest version so you gotta remember that this is Debian stable so that they're going to be focusing very much on stability as much as possible frozen bubble is going to be another game I believe GLtron is also gonna be another game uh, G music browser is not a music application I've ever heard of, but it looks like it's developed in Qt, so I'm sure that's probably pretty good. Uh, let's see, Grub Customizer, which is nice to have installed, Gwenville, Gwenview for previewing images. Uh, Handbrake is pre-installed. Uh, HookTube, I believe, is like a, a YouTube client. No. It's a lightweight YouTube. So it's like a, a cover for YouTube so you don't get all the tracker and stuff, probably. I'm not saying I'm very interested in trying that out. Let's see what's next. We'll go back down here. So we have Info Center, which is just the standard KDE Info Center. We'll look at that here in a second. Inkscape. 
Uh, Kate. K Breakout was another game. K Calc. K Marble is another game, I believe. KD Petition Manager. Kate and Live is installed by default, which is in interesting. Mahjong. Mines. Console. Krita. K Snake Duel, which is another game. K Guard. Kavantum is pre installed. K Wallet Manager. So those are all the KD man applications. LibreOffice is here. Uh, Ocular is here. The OpenDesktop.org is pre-installed so that you can go through and um, install themes directly from store.kde.com. Uh, let's see here. Pigeon Internet, which is a chat client. Pulse Audio. Q Transmission is a uh, BitTorrent client. We, Skype is pre-installed for some reason. Two versions of Skype is pre-installed for some reason. Very interesting. Steam is here by automatically. Spectacles, a screenshot uh, tool. Sousa Studio. I think that's going to be for like burning CDs. Synaptic Package Manager is here. Telegram and Thunderbird. Update Manager. Uh, Vocal Screen. I'm not. I think Vocal Screen is like a screenshot recorder. WhatsApp is pre installed. I'm guessing that's going to be a web application. Uh, VNC, a VNC server. Uh, Yorok is going to be another. This is going to be for like videos, I believe. Oh, no. This is another. Um, this is one for uh, music and stuff, too. Okay. Interesting. All right. So. First impressions on the application section is very, very minimal, but some with some weird selections. So Skype and WhatsApp are interesting things to have pre-installed because not everybody needs them. Uh, also, Kden Live is a very heavy application to have pre-installed. So uh, interesting uh, selections there. So what I'm going to do actually here is, is reboot so that I can get a fresh idea of how much memory the system uses. Okay, we're back at the login screen. Again, the reboot time was very impressive. Uh, I typed in the wrong password. I forgot that I don't use my regular password. Okay, so if we open up the terminal here, which is going to be console, and we zoom in a bit, and we do free dash M. We'll try this again. We're seeing that it's using about 638 megs of RAM, which is not bad, especially for KDE install. And if we do, we'll see that this is using the kernel 5.9, which is interesting. Now, you can correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong, but doesn't Debian Stable use the latest LTS? Or at least an LTS? Because 5.9 was not an LTS release. 5.4 was the last LTS release. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that 5.4 and 5.10 were the L latest LTS releases. But this is using 5.9, so that's interesting. Because this is Debian Stable. This is based on Debian Stable. So let's see if NeoFetch is installed. Nope. sudo apt install neofetch. See how long this takes. Not very long. Okay. Clear neofetch. So let's see. Let's let's make this a little bit bigger. So again, kernel 5.9, which is again very interesting. This. I just installed MX Linux on a hard, on a on a on um on a laptop yesterday, and I was surprised there too that there are a ton of packages involved when you're installing Debian. Two thousand six hundred sixty-two packages is a, an enormous number of packages. Arch Linux and Arch-based distros usually have around twelve hundred out of the box. Now, it, even Arc. Okay, so if you use Arco Linux, you know that you get a ton of extra stuff in Arco. You get three desktop environments. Or, or window managers, you know, XFCE, OpenBox, and i3, they're all installed, all the dependencies that go along with them, and they had 1,300 out of the box. This has 
double that. <laughs> That's very, uh, especially given the fact that there's hardly any applications installed. That I mean, that, so what you're seeing there is twofold. First of all, KDE has a ton of dependencies. I mean, just an absolute literal ton of dependencies. Second of all, apparently Debian has a ton of stuff that they install as well in the background. All right, so let's see here. So we've taken a look at memory and the kernel. I will say this, that it, responsiveness is very, very impressive. For, especially for a virtual machine. Let's take a look at the settings and see what we're using for themes here. So plasma tweaks. We wanted to look at the uh, info center and see where we're at in terms of. So we're using KDE Plasma version 5.14, which is, as you'd expect, pretty far behind. That's why that kernel is so weird. They're using a much newer kernel than I expected it to be. I expected it to be 5.4, like every other dis Debian stable that I've been using. Uh, so you're running, if you're running a stable version of Debian or something based on it, you're going to find that the KDE version is behind. Uh, so let's see here. They're using something called Netrunner Indigo. So let's look at Netrunner Black. That's going to be like a dark theme. Mm, that's kind of yucky. Why, why is that blue? Weird. Uh, let's look at the, de the desktop version. That's going to be blue. That's the reason why it's blue. That's their color. Okay. Uh, let's look and see if they have any alternatives here installed. They do. Application launch, launcher, application menu, and simple menus are, are pre-installed. Except for the simple menu does not actually work. And you can't actually change it after that error comes up. Interesting. Fascinating. Okay. Well, that's broken. <laughs> it's just, just interesting. Now, I don't remember in KDE Plasma 5.14 that Plasma Tweaks was all in one place. I thought it was all out here, you know, in the main settings area, but I could be remembering that wrong. Things seem to be grouped together better, at least in this version. Uh, I'm going to go to Breeze, Breeze Heart because I like Breeze much better. Yeah, that's so much better. All right. So that's Network Runner. Very, very brief first look. I just remind you that I don't do gaming in these first looks because this is a virtual machine and doing a game, doing gaming in a virtual machine is just not a good idea. You only get 128 megabytes of video RAM for a reason. It's not meant for running Grand Theft Auto V. So that is Netrunner. Uh, overall thoughts. I enjoy distributions that are based on Debian instead of just basing themselves on Ubuntu. Uh, the question I have about this one is, does it provide enough of a uh, reason to exist over like MX Linux? Because MX has a wonderful KDE version and it's much more popular. So uh, I will say that this is very fast and it's very minimal. It does have some weird application choices sometimes. Like two, like correct me if I'm wrong, but I did not see a video player in there, which is interesting. Uh, that last one that we opened might have been a video player, like a combined like uh, library or something. But there's no sign of. I mean, it had all these other weird choices, but there was no VLC uh, or or either even MPV or something like that. Um, so. Because it had like three music players. It had Audacious. It had... Let me look at the other... Oh, I can't open up a menu now. Because uh, that is completely broken. Alright, anyways, I guess it doesn't matter. Alright, so, uh, if you like this video, 
give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. You can support the channel by subscribing and hit the notif hitting the notification icon bell thing. Uh, and you can also support us by going to Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Uh, I just posted a blog post there about some of the new things that are coming to Tier 2 and Tier 3 patrons in mid-March or so. And I would like to thank our patrons now. And that's right, patrons with an S. Thank you to Devon C. and Marcus B. for being our patrons. Uh, we really do appreciate the, the support. Um, and I really wanted to make the joke of now that I have two patrons, I've doubled my, the number. So <laughs> it, was, it sounded funnier in my head. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.